Hello, grade 8. Let's start our new unit on fractions, also known as rational expressions. So before we do that, let's first review the numbers that we have dealt so far. Okay, so we have done in our first unit natural numbers. These are just uh, our counting numbers here. So that's 1, 2, 3, so 1 and 4. Okay, symbolically in math, it's the letter N. Whole numbers are just natural numbers with the addition of zero. So one and fourth, and you betcha that's W for its symbol. Integers, the unit that we just finished, are whole numbers and their negative equivalents. And it's not letter I though because it stands for imaginary numbers. It stands, I mean, integers are um, symbolically written as Z. In this unit, we will be dealing with rational numbers. What do you think the symbol for rational numbers? Not letter R, because R stands for real numbers. But rational numbers, um, it is letter Q. Okay? So now let's define what a rational number is. So here, I'm going to highlight the root word of the word rational, which means ratio. And we know ratio, let's say, uh, 4 is to 1. Okay? So that's a ratio. An example of another ratio is three is to four. Let's say three boys uh, in every four girls. Okay. So we know also that ratios can be written as fractions. So like three over four. And fractions can be written as decimals. And decimals can be written as percents. So you can see now that what we're not just going to be doing fractions in this unit. We're also going to be dealing with decimals and percents. Okay, so what then is a rational number? I'm going to pause the video and um, write down the definition. Here you go. So rational numbers are numbers that can be written in the form A is to B or A for B where B cannot be zero. So we know that B here cannot be zero because any division in zero would not make sense there. We learned about that in our previous unit. Okay, so tell me whether these numbers are rational. So based on this definition of rational numbers, it's a number that can be written in the form A over B. So can we write 7 in the form A over B? Definitely we can. We can write 7 over 1 and it's still equal to 7. So yes, this is a rational number. Um, how about 0 0.25 or mathematically we read it as 25 hundredths? Yes, we can convert this as 25 over 100, correct? Or further, if we divide this by 25 and we divide it by 100 as well, that would be a fourth. Okay, so it's in the ratio 1 to 4, or A over B. What about 0 0.3 repeating? So I'm going to write that 0 0.3333. If you're familiar with this fraction, this fraction is the equivalent of 1 over 3. So if you have a calculator there and you do 1 divided by 3, it's going to be uh, 0 0.333 um, repeating. It doesn't end. It only repeats. So if we are going to say what numbers are rational numbers? So we can say all the integers. Of course, um, when I say integers, it already includes whole numbers and natural numbers. Okay, all fractions. All decimals that end, or we refer to this as terminating decimals, and decimals that repeat, or we refer to this as recurring decimals. All right, in our next section here, there's a little history of fractions. I leave that for you. Just include this in, in your homework box one. You should be able to find the answer. Just a little history there on fractions. So here's the big question here. What is a fraction? I actually want to not give you an answer for this one, but I want you to write down what's your recollection of fraction? How did you learn fraction? And I'm going to try to ask that to you when I come back to class. But we have the term equivalent fractions. And equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value. They may not look um, exactly the same, but they have the same value. So here I have two boxes. And 
let me see, I'm going to cut this box here into two parts and um, highlight one part. What do you call this fraction here? Yes, this is definitely one half. All right. So now I have a second box exactly the same as the other box, but then it's divided into two parts. And as you can see, the area that's shaded is the same as the area um, shaded on the other box. So the yellow area is the same as the green area. But if we're going to describe this um, fraction here, it's going to be 2 over 4. So they are written differently, but they mean the same thing. We refer to them as equivalent fractions. So what are other equivalent fractions to 1 half? So there's 2 over 4. There's also 3 over 6. There's also 6 over 12. Now, how do we generate equivalent fractions? So, obviously here, 6 over 12 was the original 1 half multiplied by 6 on both your numerator and your denominator to generate 6 over 12. So, to write equivalent fractions, we just multiply your numerator and denominator by the same quantity, which is in this case 6 here for 6 over 12. So write the definition down. You can pause this video here. So I've written the um, how to write equivalent fractions there in cursive. Hope you understand that. Um, example 2, write equivalent fractions for the following. So very simple. We just multiply by any random quantity here. Let's say times 4 times 4 here. So that would be 8 over 12. Okay, so 2 thirds is also the same as 8 over 12. What about this one? Let's say we times this by 2. By 2. So that's 18 over 20. So you can write some more equivalent fractions, but that's how we generate equivalent fractions. So in your previous math courses, you were trying to reduce fractions. So can you just make the changes your reduction to lowest term? So let's look at 24 over 36. So how do we reduce fractions again? Yes, you are right. We are trying to divide it by a factor that they commonly share. So let me just think. I know for sure they share 2. So I divide both sides by 2 here. I mean not both sides, but numerator and denominator by 2. So that gives you 12 over 18. And here further, 12 and 18 can be further divided by 2. So that's uh, 6 over 9. And now I can divide it further by 3 uh, to get 2 over 3. Obviously, you don't need to go through all the divisions there. If you can find the biggest number that can be dividing the numerator and the denominator, go for it, and you should be quickly getting 2 thirds. But then again, if, if kind of like, oh, you see, I can divide this by 2 and go through the process slowly, that should be fine. So how do we know that the fraction is in lowest term? So we look at each number here numerator and denominator in 2 and 3. What do you know about 2 and 3? Obviously their common factor is 1. Alright, let's look at example 3 here. I've reduced it for you already. So you should have paused the video beforehand and um, try to look at this page and check if your answer is correct. Okay, so all these numbers here are fractions in lowest terms. Our next section on fraction is comparing fractions. So here, when you say comparing fractions, um, 5 eighths and 7 over 12, which one is bigger or which one is smaller, either way. So the only uh, there are a few methods here that we can look into. So obviously the method that we have commonly used is um, we express these fractions in their equivalent fractions where they share the same denominator. So we have 5 over 8 and 7 over 12. So usually we uh, express them in a common denominator. We call it lowest common denominator. So we find the LCM of 8 and 12 here. So we know 8, 16, 24, um, and so on and forth, we have 12, 24, so here 24 is the lowest common factor. So I'm going to express 8 
in terms of the denominator 24 here. So I'm obviously multiplying this by 3. So this is 15 over 24. And then the other one would be uh, times 2. So this should be 14 over 24. So we say that 5 over 8 is bigger than 7 over 12 or 7 over 12 is smaller than 5 over 8. So another method of um, comparing fractions is uh, referred to as cross multiplication uh, method. So we have 5 over 8, we set it up like this, 7 over 12, and then we cross multiply this numerator here with the denominator and this denominator here with that numerator. So we're multiplying 5 and 12 5 and 12 is 60, and 8 and 7 is 56. So we are comparing 5 eighths and 7 over 12. So 5 eighths is kind of associated with the number 60, and 7 over 12 is associated with the number 56. So in terms of 60 over 56, we say that 60 is bigger than 56. So we can, as a strategy, say now that 5 over 8 is the same as 7 over 12. You should pause this video and try to do example for on your own, and then I'll flash the answers right after. So here's the answer here. Sorry, I did everything using cross multiplication here. So let's just make the conclusion. So 2 times 10 is 20, 3 times 7 is 21. So we say 2 thirds is less than 7 over 10. Here, 10 times 36 is 360, and the other one is also 360, so they're equal. So 10 over 12 are equivalent fractions with 30 over 36. So here, um, it's less than 2 times 36 is 72, and um, the other one is 75. So we say 2 fifths is less than 15 over 36. And here, um, it's less than as well. So 7 over 21 is less than 14 over 40. All right, this ends our fractions part one. You may do now box one and hope to see you soon. I miss you all and take note that my heart and spirit is with you all the time. Okay, see you soon. Bye.